Today we are going to be looking at tropisms and auxin. So why did I pick this one? You do a whole lot about hormonal control in humans. And then there's these two sort of random lessons tacked on the end, looking at control in plants. And it seems like a lot of people go whoop, past them or don't really stick in or say, oh, yuck, it's plants. So the idea behind this lesson is to hammer these things home a bit more because even though they're plants, it's still important. Okay, and those of us who like plants, fantastic. Okay, so tropisms. We're talking now about how plants move in response to something. So we have gravitropism. And we have photo. Tropism. So the key is in the names. Gravi is the first piece of the word gravity. So gravitrophism is whether a plant is moving towards or away from gravity. So movement in response to gravity. Photo. Photo is always when they're talking about light. So phototropism is movement towards or away from light. Bear in mind that we're not talking about movement here in terms of the plant getting up and walking across the room to stand by the window. Okay, we're talking about here in growth direction. Okay, so the plant will bend to face the window. He's not going to tuck himself out of his pot and walk across the room. So phototropism and graphitropism movement here, we're talking movement of a piece of the plant in order to adjust because of either gravity or light. So if we have towards and we have away from, we need a technical way to indicate those two. Movement towards, we say that this is a positive tropism. So positive gravitropism is movement towards gravity. Positive phototropism is a bend towards light. So away from then is the opposite of towards. The opposite of positive is negative. So a negative gravitropism means that we're growing away from gravity. So upwards growth is negative gravitropism because it's away from gravity. Gravity, remember, falls down. A negative phototropism is away from the light. So we're growing away from the light, so down into the soil, when we grow down, when the roots grow down, that is then a negative phototropism. So generally, the aerial parts of our plant are growing with a negative gravitropism and a positive phototropism. Whereas our roots are growing with a positive gravitropism and a negative phototropism. So you can see now how we get control. We have shoots growing upwards and roots growing down where they should be. So what is the point of all of this? Well, we say that leaves should be growing up and roots should be going down. So why do they have to grow up? Because they want to be exposed to sunlight. If we don't have sunlight exposure, then we don't get photosynthesis. So we have leaves that are exposed to light for photosynthesis and on the other end of the plant we have the roots that are penetrating the soil now there's a few things going on here, okay? We've, we've talked about root hair cells before. So the water is entering into those roots. But we also have um, that, that the root network helps to keep the plant stable. So the deeper the root system, the more stable the plant. And of course we have mineral salts coming in with our water. 
So the roots penetrate the soil for stability, water, and mineral salts. So all those pictures that you draw when you're little and you draw the tree trunk and you draw the top of the tree and then you learn about roots and now you think, oh, I'm clever. I can put grass in at the bottom of my tree and then I can put my tree roots in underneath. So this whole format, this whole growth of everything is based on these gravitropisms and phototropisms where we want to go leaves for photosynthesis, roots for stability and absorption. And that then is, is keeping that plant the right way up. It would be a bit odd if the plant grew the wrong way up. Okay, so another reminder here that we are talking about parts of the plant only here. So even in this diagram I drew here, my beautiful little sketch, you can see that some of the roots are growing sideways. So there's a real fine tuning of balance, I mean up and down and sideways, because we can't just grow straight up and straight down. We've got to grow laterally as well. So that is where we get a little bit more um, flexibility in the system, a little bit more fine tuning of the system. There's a, a lot more going on than what we study at IGBio. Okay, but it's important that what you do study at IGBio that you're fully comfortable with because then as you sort of step up the detail at further levels, then you've got that solid base to work from. So when we're talking about gravitropism and phototropism, we're talking about parts of the plant that are responding to light and gravity. In particular, we're talking about shoots and we're talking about roots. Okay, so shoots being those brand new baby pieces of plant. Okay, bright green and still growing into their first leaves. There we're talking about shoots and we're talking about roots, standard roots underground. Okay, and we're looking at simplified things. We're not worrying about things that go sideways at this stage. Okay, so plants got to grow up, plants got to go down, plants got to grow in the right way. How does it know what to do? That's where auxin comes in. So we shall now talk more about auxin. You are more than likely aware that humans have hormones, even if you haven't studied hormonal control yet. Things like insulin, really important in controlling blood sugar levels. So plants have a, a similar sort of idea here. They're not hormones per se, okay? We call them growth substances. So hormones in humans, in plants, we talk about growth substances. And they're an equivalent sort of thing. We're talking about chemicals that move through and that have an effect and change the way the organism responds. So in this case, it's changing the growth that affects then how plant parts move or bend in response to different stimuli. So let's just make a little note there. And the big deal of why we're talking about auxin, so auxin is one particular growth substance, like insulin is one particular hormone. Okay? Auxin is a really cool one because auxin actually controls what we're talking about in this lesson. Auxin controls, let me give myself some space there. Direction of growth. 
in response to light and gravity. So when we're looking at our basic overview and what's happening with light and what's happening with gravity, then auxin is the one that is our sort of first level of stop to understand. So let's have a look in a little bit more detail because it's quite funky. Auxin in the root and auxin in the shoot are actually two different things. So let's have a look at the shoot and we're going to compare it to the root. So the shoot, the brand new baby growth. So when we're talking about seedlings, the first seedling coming out, okay? When we're talking about older plants, we can get new shoots forming even on older plants. So what happens in the shoot is that auxin collects on the shady side. So if you think about it, there's your shoot, right? Doesn't even have leaves yet. And let's say the sunshine is coming from this side. So the shady side is going to be this side here, okay? So that's where the auxin is going to collect. So in the shoot, auxin collects on the shady side. And what does the auxin do? It stimulates lengthening of the cells. Oh, can't spell. Lengthening of the cells. And what does that mean? If you think about it, just a little bit in your head here, if these cells were to get longer, okay, but these cells on the sunny side stay the same length, then the whole thing is going to get longer on one side, but the short side is going to keep it down, so it's going to end up bending. So that shady side is going to get longer, and the whole plant is going to bend over towards the sunshine. Perfect. So now we bend our shoot light, and then when we get our leaves popping out, those leaves are perfectly aligned for maximum sunlight absorption, so maximum photosynthesis, so maximum growth. So it's all working together to maximize growth, which is what your plant wants to do. Okay, so auxin in the shoot collects on the shady side, lengthens the cell, and the shoot bends towards the light. What happens in the root? So let's imagine that we have a root that's growing like this. Okay, so what happens with the auxin is that the auxin collects on the bottom of the root. In this case, it has the exact opposite effect. The auxin actually keeps the cells small. Because remember, when you've got a cell, right, and it divides into two cells, it makes little cells. Those cells are then grow into big cells, and they divide again, little big, little big, little big. But when those cells reach their full size, okay, it's thus big. Now they can grow more, or they can stay that same size, little cells. And what it does is it keeps these cells here on the bottom small. So the cells on the top of the root are growing. So we have that same thing. We have that growth on the top of the root. Okay. So we have growth on the top. These cells are getting bigger. So our root is going to bend down. So here we keep the cells small. Ooh. They don't go to the mall and go shopping, they say small. Okay, and what happens is the root bends down. So, hopefully you've noticed this, right? We are collecting in the shoot on the shady side. We're talking about light. So here we have a light response. Auxin where there is no light. 
in the root, we are collecting on the bottom of the root. So we're responding to gravity. The auxin is moving down through the cells. So on the bottom side of the root, this is a gravity response. So this is why we say that auxin controls direction of growth in response to light and gravity. In the shoot, the auxin is doing a light response. In the root, the auxin is doing a gravity response. So it works in both parts of the plants, but in very different ways. In the shoot, we get lengthening. In the root, keep the cells small. But both of them, then we have a tropic response. So when we have our shoot bending towards the light, we have positive phototropism. And when we have our root bending down, we now have positive gravitropism. So we have a phototropic and a gravitropic response going on in different parts of the body. In your syllabus, the focus is on the what's going on in the shoot rather than what's going on in the root. So we're going to spend a few moments now looking at this shoot impact in a bit more detail. So auxin in the shoot. Let's get ourselves a shoot. Okay, so remember, this is a brand new shoot. We don't have leaves yet. Okay, obviously, when we get leaves and the shoot is beyond the leaves, okay, we have growing, growing plants. This is this is happening. Okay, so where is the auxin produced? Start off. Auxin is produced at the very tip of the shoot. Okay, so now let's make a sunshine. Okay, so the sun is shining on this side of our shoot. What happens next is the auxin is going to spread down the stem. But what's really cool is it doesn't spread evenly. It's going to spread and collect on the shady side of the shoot. So, auxin spreads down the stem. Auxin collects on the shady side of the shoot. Away from the light. Okay, so there's our bright green. Then we get greater elongation of cells where we have auxin. Okay, so greater elongation of cells with auxin. So now I'm going to attempt to draw this. Okay, so let's say we have a very simple shoot. Okay, a whole nine cells. Each one of those little blocks is a cell. So sun is coming from 
the same side. So what we need to do is we need to make the cells on the other side bigger. So these are three cells, three cells. Then these cells here are going to grow more. Okay, so what's going to happen, that was a very bad diagram, is that, you know, when I did this by hand, it looked a whole lot better. Those cells that are growing longer are going to push everybody over. So now you can see, I hope, that we have the same short cells, From the light side and now we have longer cells from the shady side so then let's just add in a green line to show our our shoot so um, we're taking a piece sort of down in the middle of the shoot so let's draw him like this then he bends a bit here in this one. And now our shoot is fully bent over to the sunshine. So that when he grows leaves, let's put some leaves in. Now you can see both leaves are getting maximum photosynthesis. Whereas these two leaves here, you had one leaf in the light and one leaf in the dark. So when that shoot bends, now we maximize photosynthesis. And it's all about those sizes, different sizes of cells, which then cause that movement, that change in direction of growth. How does this happen? Why did she write it in blue? Well, one of the simplest ways for the cell to get bigger is to absorb more water. Okay, so what we have going on here is greater absorption of water. Remember, be technical, by osmosis. Okay, this stretches the cell walls. And can increase cell size. So depending on all sorts of other complicated levels of control, I mean, we understand that when we increase water, then we get a turgid cell. That's the end of it. But when you link that in with all sorts of other signals that's going on in the cell, it can actually lead to cell growth. So that is how our cells grow when they're elongating on that shame side. So we have more water coming in. And then the volume of the cell, the volume of the cell contents expands, and then the cell itself grows in order to take into account that large volume. And it's so cool because, I mean, it manages to grow in the right direction. It grows longer so that it can bend. It doesn't just go short and fat. There's so much fine level of control that's going on in the cell amongst all of this. Okay, so we're looking at it from a very high level of understanding. Just saying, okay, that the auxin is producing a shoot tip. It spread down the stem um, of the shoot. So here we might actually change this one. This one here. Um, we can use the word shoot. Okay, auxin collects on the shady side of the shoot, away from the light, and this leads to greater elongation of these cells because we have extra water being taken up in the cells. And whenever we're talking about water into cells. We're always going to talk about osmosis. The question has come through of how does the, the sort of process work now we want to bend down in the root. So if we bend down the root, now the auxin is going to have the opposite effect. Okay, because in the root, remember, auxin keeps those cells small. So the rest of the root cells on the other side, on the top of the root, those root cells are growing as normal. But because the ones on the bottom are small, it's going to have a similar effect of the big cells are going to expand and it's then going to push down because those little cells hold tight. Okay, so it's a very different process that's going on. Same chemical, different process of how the cell is actually controlled. Um, 
but it is the same idea that we have short cells and long cells. So in the shoot, we have short cells next to the sun, long cells in the shade, and therefore we bend over towards the sun. In the root, we have short cells underneath, close to gravity, long cells on top, and therefore we bend down towards gravity. So we have positive phototropism in the shoot, and we have positive gravitropism in the root. So hopefully now you've got an idea that this is an important topic. You can't just ignore it at the end of learning about hormones in humans. Plant growth substances are a really fascinating and important aspect of biology as well.